We can also use the concepts that we've learned for the reference angles and cast rules to solve equations in the form of if sine theta is equal to a, cos theta is equal to a, or tan theta is equal to a, where zero is less than or equal to theta, which is less than or equal to 360, and a is a real number. In this case, we're gonna be so solving for what the angles are given these possible exact ratios. So the first thing is we need to determine what quadrants the angle is going to be in by looking at the sine ratio. Because remember, for any sine ratio, if it's like sine is positive, then we can say that it's going to be in quadrants one and two, so there's gonna be two possible answers. We can determine the reference angle by drawing a rough sketch and using second sine, second cos, or second tan, where we always need to do it from the positive version or the absolute value version of that ratio. You always need to do the positive one to get what the reference angle is. Then, knowing what the reference angle is and which quadrants it lie in, we can solve for what the angles are going to be. So, for example one, if I have sine of one over two, well, then I know that if it's positive sign, the solutions are going to be in quadrants 1 and 2 using the cast rule. Then I'm going to solve for my reference angle by saying it's going to be sine to the negative 1 of 1 over 2, which is going to be 30 degrees. And I can state that in quadrant 1, the angle is going to equal the reference angle, or 30 degrees. In quadrant 2, the angle is going to equal 180 minus the reference angle, or 150 degrees. And those are my two possibilities, 30 degrees and 150 degrees. For example 2, tan is positive which means that this is going to occur in quadrants 1 and 3. I can say that the reference angle is going to be tan to the negative 1 of 2.5, which is going to be approximately 68 degrees. In quadrant 1, Theta is going to equal 68 degrees because it just is the reference angle. In quadrant 3, theta is going to equal 180 plus the reference angle or 248 degrees. For example, C. If cos is negative, cos is negative in quadrants 2 and 3. The reference angle is going to equal cos to the negative 1 of the positive version, or absolute value version of this, positive root 3 over 2, which would be 30 degrees. In quadrant 2, the angle is going to be 180 minus 30, or 150 degrees. In quadrant 3, the angle is going to be 180 plus 30, or 210 degrees. For example, D, we have a negative value for sine, which is going to occur in quadrants three, and four. So we can solve for the reference angle and take sine to the negative one of 0 0.36, which is going to give me approximately 21 degrees. In quadrant three, this is going to be 180 plus 21, or 201 degrees. And in quadrant 4, 
this is going to be 360 minus 21 or 339 degrees. For example, E, tan is going to be positive. This occurs in quadrants 1 and 3. The reference angle is going to equal tan to the negative 1 of 1 or 45 degrees. In quadrant 1, the angle is going to be 45 degrees. In quadrant 3, the angle is going to be 225 degrees. For example, F, I can see that sine of theta is not isolated. The first thing I'd have to do is I'd have to subtract root 3 from both sides and say that 2 sine theta is going to equal negative root 3 and then to get sine theta by itself, I'm going to divide both sides by 2 and say that sine of theta is equal to negative root 3 over 2. Well, sine is negative, so that's going to be in quadrants 3 and 4. The reference angle is going to be sine to the negative 1 of positive root 3 over 2, or 60 degrees. In quadrant 3, this is going to equal 180 plus 60, which would be 240 degrees. And in quadrant 4, this is going to be 360 minus 60, or 300 degrees. For example, G, if sine is 0, sine is 0 on the positive x-axis as well as on the negative x-axis. We know from our unit circle that the positive x-axis is going to, going from 0 to 360, account for 0 and 360 degrees. The negative x-axis is going to be at 180 degrees. Because it says equals 0 or equals 360, then that means that theta is going to equal 0, 180, or 360 degrees. For example, h, all of a sudden I see this squared value in here, which would be cos theta times cos theta. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to move that 3 over 4 to the other side and say cos squared theta is equal to positive 3 over 4, and then I'm going to take the square roots of both sides. Cos of theta is equal to, well, just like when I'm solving for x, I need to take the positive and negative square root. So I can say that cos of theta is going to equal positive and negative root 3 over square root of 4 is going to be 2. Cos is going to be positive in quadrants 1 and 4, and it's going to be negative in quadrants 2 and 3. So because I'm squaring it, this accounts for all four quadrants, when it's positive and when it's negative. So, my reference angle is going to equal cos to the negative 1 of root 3 over 2, 
or 30 degrees. In quadrant one, theta is gonna equal 30 degrees. In quadrant two, theta is gonna equal 180 minus 30 or 150 degrees. In quadrant three, theta is gonna equal 180 plus 30 or 210 degrees. And in quadrant four, theta is gonna equal 360 minus 30 or 330 degrees. All four of those answers are correct. For example two, if tan of theta is negative 2 over 3 and cos of theta is negative 3 over root 13, find the exact value of sine of theta. Well, I know that tan and cos are both negative, which means this has to exist in quadrant 2. I know that my R value has to be positive, which means it's gonna be my X value is gonna be negative. And if I have negative two over three, then if the three is what's negative, then the two is going to be a positive. Which means that sine of theta given this angle here, is going to be 2 over root 13, which would be the same as 2 root 13 over 13. For example, B, if sine of A is equal to negative 1 over 4 and tan is also negative, if tan and sine are both negative, then it's going to be in quadrant Four. I know that R has to be positive, so it's going to be Y is going to be the negative one. I don't know what x is yet, but I can solve that using my Pythag. I'm gonna say that x squared is gonna equal four squared minus one squared. x squared is gonna equal 15, which means that x is gonna equal the square root of 15. Cose is going to equal my adjacent root 15 over my hypotenuse of 4, and I can't simplify that answer at all.